The year is 1979. The place, Bristol. Funny life being a private detective. You never know what you're going to find or who you're going to run into. Name, Eddie Shoestring. Rank, private ear for Radio West. History of mental illness brought about by computer phobia. I blew a fuse, smashed one up. Computer, that is. So they confiscated my code key and carted me off to a lunatic asylum. Shoestring was one of the first in a long line of unorthodox TV detectives, the forerunner to Bergerac and Spender. He dealt with low-key cases set against exotic Bristol locations. Shoestring's many quirks included sketching for therapy. The cartoons were drawn by Grey Jolliffe, creator of Wicked Willie. Is that how I come across to you? I'm sorry, it's an irritating habit of mine. His place of abode was a rundown houseboat. You're not supposed to come here. This boat helped save my sanity once. It is private. And he always lacked a certain sartorial elegance. My tailor, yes, I, I think he's probably given me up. Who are you? Shoestring. Uh, I usually carry a card. I, uh, used to carry a card. I'm what you might call a private detective. How do I know you're Eddie Shoestring? Answer me that. Um, oh, what about this? It's my Radio West expense sheet. Stay away from bodily harm. After two years of constant physical and mental abuse, Shoestring retired from radio detective work. I'm sorry to bother you. But now, let's go back to an episode from 1980, Mockingbird. Mr. Shoestring. I've been waiting for Mr. Shoestring in a cinema foyer. Oh, dear. It's the third night running, you stayed late. You know, come to 
think of it, you couldn't have been more than a mail away on that occasion. Might as well have been a hundred males for all the good you are. I mean, what use are you in the fight against real crime? Call yourself the private ear? <laughs> you couldn't get your ear to the ground, shoestring, if you stood on your hands and stuck your head down a manhole. You really are a wash -out. Wrong man for the job. And the sooner the public finds out, the better. What am I going to do with you, Eddie? I keep giving you these chances. I'm a man of my word. But let's face it. You're rubbish. Like your program. We were going to see that film, remember? Oh, I'm sorry. Years before it comes round again. Well, you can catch it on television. Oh, not in French. I'll never be able to see the subtitles on my telly. Why are you here? Because I want to talk to him. You might never get another call. Like your program. I'll leave you to wonder what the next high spot will be. Next time, it could be nearer. Let me say, stay tuned. I don't understand it. Why has he got him for me? Well, it won't do any good to sit here brooding. Come and have a drink. Radio West, can I help you? Radio West, can I help you? Can I speak to Eddie Shoestring? I'm afraid we're only taking listeners' calls for Carl Winning at the moment. Mr. Shoestring isn't in the building, but if you care to leave a message on his recorded service... I'll see Mr. Shoestring gets it as soon as possible. All right. you know where tonight though you'll find out soon enough too late of course that's your trouble bumshe always trailing behind like a lame tortoise the castle street subway was perfect stupid little cow came along swinging her hips in her handbag piece of cake i nicked it from her in a special spot too right under your nose as it were your poster on the wall the one that tells Radio West listeners how good you are. <laughs> That's a laugh. Nice touch, though, don't you think? Well, that's another one. And there'll be more. Oh, it's a promise. What time did he phone in, Tony? Few minutes after ten. Were you here? No, I was across the road having a drink. What's 
the matter? Did you miss your brandy and cigars? No, I had them, thanks. That's all, then. Except to wish you all a very good night from all of us here at Radio West. Good night. Night, Tom. Night, Carl. Night, everyone. This could get out of hand. I hate the station being involved and yet having to remain silent about it. I think the women being mugged are just a little bit more important than some radio station. Come. Detective Inspector Healy, sir. Ah, oh, come in, Barry. Have a seat. Thanks. Like a drink? No, thank you. How's the girl? Well, she'll be all right. He only bruised her. Do you want to hear the tape? Stay in bravado, I expect, sending up your daring detective. Find that amusing, do you? No. But some joker thinks it's a game taking you on. Very. No, thanks. Uh, I'll have a copy of the tape. Tony? Give me five minutes. Every time a price. Well, this is the third attack. Aren't you going to do something? What are you suggesting? A tap on our lines. I could get the board to approve it. How many thousands of calls do you take in a day? We might have to wait weeks. Yeah, we might, we might not, but it's worth trying, isn't it? We do have a manpower problem. A manpower problem, that's great. Look, whoever this bloke is, he hates your god shoestring. That could mean you crossed him in one of your cute little cases. Crossed a lot of people while I've been doing this job. Will you be long? I won't be. Don't know about the others. You fancy a cigar? Oh. Ta. What's up? Ah, uh, strangely neighbourhood mugger again. Stupid little cow came along, swinging her hips and her handbag. Piece of cake. Are you sure you don't want Radio West to put the voice on air in Eddie's programme? No, we still don't think it's a good idea, not yet. Neither do I, really. It calls me a half for every ten seconds. One of the listeners might just recognise the voice. Well, if it is his real voice. But apart from that, our chief constable has very strong views on this sort of thing. It's powerful radio. Publicity is precisely what this nut wants. Give him showbiz and God knows where it could lead. I'll go and chase up those tapes for you. After you, sir. We could be lucky this time. If the girl tonight got a glimpse of his face. I'm going to try an ID parade tomorrow with a few six specimens who were known to us. Well, that's good. At least you're going to do something. Here's your tape. Oh, thanks. Anything else we can do for you? I'll let you know. Good night. Good night. What's happening? They're going to have an ID parade. That's a lot of good. ID parades don't count in evidence. See ya. You going now, Eddie? Yeah, in a minute. Healy's on this one, is he? Mm. Supercilious git. You know him, do you? Used to be a copper myself. Till I had a car crash. Decided on a quieter life. Oh, but I met plenty of creeps like this mugger of yours when I was in the force. Oh, I suppose you did. I just heard a bit of tonight's tape. Funny thing is, I thought I recognised the voice. You did? Hmm, seemed familiar. I don't know. Wish I could help you nail that bastard. <laughs> well, if you get any more ideas, just let me know, OK? Cigar? It's bad for my asthma. <laughs> <laughs> no, thanks. It's bad for my broadcasting. Give it to Sonia. <laughs> right. See ya. Mind how you go. Under your nose, as it were. It's always good to see you again, Eddie. And like other patients, you don't mind coming back. Psychiatrists like that, you know. It gives us the reassurance that all our hard work seems worthwhile. Neil, could you please just listen to the tape? Oh, I've heard enough. That's another one. Well, what do you make of it? Well, it's impossible to make an analysis from a tape. Any more than I could tell you what goes on in the head of that seagull. Well, can't you try anything? A little guesswork, perhaps? Yeah, that'll do. Yes, well, the choice of phrasing certainly indicates a personality disturbance. Yeah, so does jumping on women in the dark. I don't need a psychiatrist to tell me that. That's very good, Robert. Uh, Robert, it, it's all right. We weren't going to bother... 
Well, come on, Neil. Why is this mugger ringing me? Well, he's putting two fingers in the air, isn't he? You're a well-known radio personality now. And you're a detective. We're all very proud of you here. Well, you can drop all that couchside manner stuff with me. Just tell me. Why is he doing it? A psychopathic compulsion to play tag with the law. Yeah. Through me. Yes. And he's got at you, hasn't he, Eddie? You're taking it far too personally. You're too hypertensive, too speedy. You'd better be careful, otherwise you'll have to put up with my couchside manner again. Try some more guesswork. Well, if you want me to say someone in a check suit with a big nose, forget it. I mean, it's impossible to judge. But I do have one thing to say that's important. There is danger. Of what? Escalation. What may have started out as a mocking game for this man could easily progress to something far more serious. It's a typical behavior pattern among certain kinds of psychopath. Once they begin to think that they're uncatchable. See, Eddie? You are all wound up. You've forgotten the beard. I started to grow that when you were still a patient here. He's the second one in up on the left. Thing. I just wanted to see if there's anyone I recognised. Well, you can just clear it off. <sighs> I'm sorry. Isn't it him? I wish it was him, miss. <laughs> It'd stop him getting in our bloody way. I'm a split personality. After I mug these girls, I give myself a ring to tell <laughs> myself what I've done. <laughs> I think I look like a mugger. Slightly dissipated. Oh, it's called character, I guess. Oh. And what did your Dr. Sterling have to say? Well, he seemed more concerned about my state of mind. Quite right. And I bet he told you to leave the police to handle crime on the streets. I wonder if anybody ever steals the spoons in here. You want some lunch? But here. No, no, thank you very much. Right. Well, I'm due over at the courts. You can give me a lift. I was going to walk. Pleasure. Oh. Thank you. Have you booked? Could be anybody. Just an ordinary person. Only well, he isn't ordinary, is he? Why don't you take Dr. Sterling's advice, Eddie? Stop fretting. At least say we'll go out tonight. We'll go out tonight. Well, we could go to the theatre and make a nice change. <laughs> Turn on in the tape line. Okay.
something special for tonight. A real treat for you. Of course, you won't guess what it is. Any more than you can feign me, Eddie. You're thick as three planks. So long for now. Charming fella. Poor quality tape. You can buy him anywhere. Tony, just play that last bit back again, will you? I just thought I heard something. What? Well, I don't know. I mean, just something at the end. Just play it back again, will Hang you? Hang on. Could be anything. Probably not the mic when he switched off. Oh, come on, even I can tell the difference between a microphone clunk and a background noise. I mean, that's something that happens in the distance. Well, come on, Tony, that's the first time that he hasn't actually phoned in. I mean, it gives us an opportunity to find out where he actually made the tape. Do you want to run through it again? No, I've heard it enough. That voice makes me sick. Thanks, Jenny. Uh, better make another copy for the police. I just wish I knew what he was going to do next. Probably doesn't know himself yet. Oh, I think he does, you see. I think he's got the whole thing worked out. How can you second-guess a lunatic? Well, why don't you forget the police, put him on the air, and let the public hear him? Oh, please, Eddie, you heard what Healy said. Yeah, but I'm talking about warning people. I have to think of Radio West's relations with the law. Oh, so someone else gets their head bashed in tonight, and you're prepared to let that happen in the name of good relations? Eddie, I must abide by the advice of the police. OK, OK, well, don't put his voice on the air, then. But you've got to do something, put out some kind of warning. No. Well, if you don't, I'm through. I resign. I was lucky to get the theatre tickets. I got the last two. Great. Did you mean it about resigning? No, yeah, why not? Nobody's doing anything. Radio West aren't doing anything. The police aren't doing anything. Come to that, I'm not doing anything. My personal heavy breather's boasting another job tonight, and all I'm going to do is sit in a bloody theatre. Do you good? Do you want another crack up? Maybe that's what he intends. How would he know your history? Telephone. Hello? Mrs. Bayliss? Yes, Sonia, he's here. Yes, Sonia, I'm here. Mr. Satchley asked me to ring you. Oh, yeah. We're putting out a warning in several spots tonight. Oh, that's, that's very good news, Sonia. Thank you. Hello? Yeah, I'm still here. That's, that's even better news. Thanks very much, Sonia. Thanks. Good night. Nice one. An oldie from way back in the 20s. Those are the days when Thrubbins would buy you a champagne supper and still leave change for a taxi home. And talking of taxis, some good advice for all you young girls going out on the town tonight. Seriously, there have been a number of mugging incidents lately in the centre of town, and the police advice to all you chicks is to stick together. If you can't afford a taxi, don't walk home alone. Come to lend us your support, have you? Yeah, I just thought you might find me useful. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to try and pinpoint him, are you? Yeah, well, if a dozen cars standing by, all the attacks are taking place in the city centre, and he always uses a public phone box, so if he rings Radio West from one of them, we're on to him. Yeah. But you've got to have him on the line for some time, haven't you? Yes. Well, for at least a minute. If you let me talk to him, I reckon I can get you more than a minute. Good 
You know, I never knew that before. Each of these is an individual number. I wonder if I could find my landlady's number. I might be able to reduce her bill. Your landlady, Mrs. Bayliss. She works for us in a legal office, doesn't she? I've heard her vaguely mention it, yes. You wouldn't ever think of asking her for privileged information, would you? Mrs. Bayliss? I can't even get her to buy me a lunch in the police canteen. this? I'd like to leave a message for Eddie. Yes? You've got one of those telephone recording things, haven't you? Yes. Well, switch it on, sweetheart. I haven't got all made. Is it working? Yes. Hello, Eddie. I'll have to be quick. I think Mrs. Bayliss wants to use the phone. This is just to tell you that I've really done you proud this time. That pretty little receptionist of yours, she didn't quite make it home tonight. She's waiting for you. So long. Well? What time? OK. Yes. Yes. We change the pattern he phoned to Mrs. Bayliss instead. And? You got the little redhead who works at your reception. Is she all right? She's very shocked. He was waiting for her. You must have watched her before now. You must have. Well, now my entire staff is going to feel threatened. Right. There's something else I'd like to discuss with you privately. Have you got something to say to me? Eddie, we've got to drop your show. OK. I think a holiday would be the best plan. And let's face it, earlier today you wanted to resign, so what difference does it make? Absolutely no difference. I've got the safety of the people who work for me to consider. Someone is waging a war... How long would you be dropping it for? Oh, I don't know. We'd have to work that out. But the important thing is, these muggings may stop. You can make the announcement yourself tomorrow. Well, you can make the announcement, Don. Hi. Hello. They're a bit pathetic, really, aren't they? They're lovely. Thank you. How are you? OK. It's only a hairline crack. I ain't getting ceilings. I'll be out in a couple of days. Radio West must be collapsing. You're not on the desk and I'm not on the air. Mm. Mr. Sashley told me. 
He was here first thing this morning. But those are his, aren't they? He always ever does it, doesn't he? I like being fussed over. I even had a record request played for me this morning on the hospital's own radio programme. It was Tom. Tom? Tom Everett, you know, one of our night security men. Tom. He does voluntary work here during the day. Here. Yeah. Listen. I feel like a doctor. That was the theme from from here to eternity. For all the lovely <laughs> ladies in maternity. The ladies in waiting. And this is yours truly, Tommy Twiddler yeah. Everett, waiting for your record hmm. choice. Awful. <laughs> as long as it doesn't affect recovery. Actually, Tom asked me to give you a message when he knew you were coming. He said, would you go and see him? So, that's the end of my record requests for this morning. Hope you enjoyed our hour together. Be back tomorrow. And now, here's Mrs Vera Driver with her daily talk about how to get the best out of your diet. Today, I'm going to talk about the different types of dieters. Firstly, there are the hamsters. I didn't know you were a... swear they're eating nothing. I didn't know you were a DJ. Accident. In more ways than one. I was in this hospital as a patient after I pranged the panda. I got bored, so they gave me a go. A little bit of experience with police call work. Sonia said that she wanted to see me. Poor kid. When they find that bastard, can I have a free poke at him? Tom, do you have anything in particular to tell me? I've identified the voice. <laughs> well, who is he? He was one of my regular record requesters, and he was a patient here. Yeah, I've got tapes of all my old shows. This one will show you how similar his voice is. There you are. Whiskey. Thank you. makes you feel brighter, Mrs. Hunter. That was from your daughter, Sylvia, and all at 29, hoping you'll be home again with them soon. Is this next bit? Who's next? Hello, Tommy. They call me Tommy at the hospital. This is for Jim and Sean and Terry and all the rest of the lads in Ward 6. We'd like something by Bill Haley, if you've got it. Bill Haley and the Comets. <laughs> you lads are certainly showing your age down there in Ward 6. But here we go. I have got a Bill Haley number. What do you think? That's the voice, isn't it? Mm, it certainly sounds like him. But then there are people who sound like me. You haven't got an accent. Well, he has. When did he take this? June, year before last. And he didn't give a name? No, he didn't, but I checked him out just the same. As any ex-copper would. How? Oh. Belfast accent, Ward 6, orthopaedic. And there he was in the hospital files, address and all. Name's Ronald James Baisley. He had a slip disc. Your next door neighbour said I'd find you here. She should start an information centre. Yeah, I'm trying to contact your husband, Ron. So am I. We split up two years ago. And you've no idea where he is? If I had, I wouldn't have to work in this dump. He stopped paying maintenance before Christmas, the week before, to be exact. Nice of him, wasn't it? I think he's a bit short on the Irish charm. Listen, life with Ron makes living with the Ayatollah look like heaven. Sorry, it's his mother who was the Ayatollah. Ron was her bully boy. Well, where's his mother, then? With him, that's the point. They're made for each other. Always moving from one place to another. That's how he keeps one jump ahead of the court. When you said that he was a, a bully boy, what do, you, what do you mean exactly? That he used to uh, knock you about or what? His hobby. His hobby? Well, what was his work? A plumber. Specialises in drains. And if flaming well belongs to him. What do you want with Ron, then? Well, if I can trace him, I'll tell you. Listen, the only thing that I can tell you is, is that somebody saw him driving a van once. One of those emergency services. Coming emergency. Thank you. Look, you've been, uh, you've been very helpful. Thanks. Oh, please, you don't have to do that, really. No, it's a pleasure. Just don't um, waste it on the bingo. Thank you very much. <laughs> so, 
pretty kid. Is that yours? Eleven weeks. Well, I never had much luck with men. Her father was smashing them. <laughs> He's taken a flyer too. <laughs> Hello? Is that, um, clear systems? Yep. Yeah. It's it's not actually a, a plumbing problem. I'm trying to track down an old mate of mine from the Navy. Really? No, I, I was in... Um, submarines. Submarines. Yeah. Now, his name's Ron Baisley. I was told he worked for you. No? Uh, OK. But that's fine. That doesn't matter, then. Thank you very much. Yeah, and the same to you, sir. Thank you. Bye-bye. Radio West, can I help you? Go ahead, caller. Hello? Yes. Hello? Is that ringer, Rod? Yes. Yeah, I'm trying to track down a guy called Ron Baisley. What's it in connection with? Well, he was just an old friend of mine in the army. Does he work for you? Sorry, we don't give information about employees on the phone. The only information I want is, does he work for... Right. Ring a rod. You've just had another phone call. It's only common sense to assume that the mugger has been keeping this building under observation. Especially the women. Not a very nice thought. And what happened to Sonia last night is appalling. Now, I know you're all very sensible. But please be careful and watchful. And try not to walk out of here alone at any time. I appreciate you couldn't give me any information on the phone, so here I am. Who are you? Uh, my name's Shoestring. I rang you earlier from Radio West. Still makes no odds with me, Squire. Look, do you know where I could find Ron Baisley? Sorry. You've got a programme on the radio for that, ain't you? Base calling sudden up. Base calling sudden up. You receiving number? Yeah, it is. What is it? <laughs> You in trouble? Over? Nothing serious, Biz. Thanks. Keep my head down. Where are you now? Over? Just finished up in Hopwells. Gonna have a drink at the Lion. Then I'm off home. OK. Over and out. Flake things, I ask. The flies are terrible around here. Just that heap of them packies next door. Some of the food. 
But you want to be careful with those, Mel. They got arsenic in them. Ridiculous price. You boil a few of them up, you've got poison. You should have known that when your dad was alive. <laughs> you poisoned them anyway with your cooking. Hey, what's for supper? Lamb chops. They were a ridiculous price, too. You going out tonight? No, not tonight. This says there was a bloke looking for me. Private detective, he says. Hello, my name is Shoestring. I want to see Mr. Baisley. He's not here. Oh, I think he is. You see, I just saw him come in a minute ago. What did you run for? I just want to talk with you. Is it you like to have the advantage over people, is that it? What are you talking about? Go on. Get your van and hop it for now. Why can't you leave my run alone? That little cow of a wife won't get a penny out of him. Not after the life she's led him. I'm not after him for bloody maintenance, you stupid woman. Erica. I didn't, I didn't phone you, okay? It wasn't me. All right? Okay? I've said that often enough on the air. Listen, I can't explain now. 
I need your help. Well, I'm always asking listeners for that. You mean he'd snipped out words and phrases? I suppose he must have recorded all my programmes. I think I'll make some coffee. Yeah? Eddie? It's Tom. Uh, Tom Everett. Yeah? Somebody rang the night bell just now. I went down. It was Ron Baisley. He just pushed past me. I'm sorry. Hello, Eddie. Glad you could come. You just walk in off the street and get the job. Job? Job, what the hell's my job got to do with mugging women? You really are stupid, aren't you? I want everyone to see just how useless you are. You got no police training? Hmm? I have. You've got no, no broadcasting technique, I have! What am I supposed to be, huh? A night porter! Look, Tom, be reasonable. You be reasonable! Tom, I will help you. You couldn't catch me, could you? The first real test, and where do you get? Nowhere. Test? You go around beating up women just to test me. What makes you think you could help me, anyway? You couldn't help those girls, could you? Have you fired Ron Beardsley yet, Eddie? You couldn't even catch him, could you? You do remember Ron Beardsley? Call yourself the private ear. You couldn't get your ear to the ground if you stuck your head down the back <laughs> No, don't speak to me. Don't say anything. Just shut up! Tom. What did you expect to achieve? Those women, Tom, they're nothing to do with me. They're not me. Well, we're on our own now. And 
What do you expect me to do? Because you pushed me so far. You've pushed me so far. Sit down. Get out of my way. Sit down! Just get away from me, will you? Go on. Just get away. Further back. Go on. Because you'll be much... You'll be much safer there. In a moment, Criminal Records, a nostalgic look at four decades of TV detectives and the hit sounds of their era. Protecting money, the backroom boys have come up with this ingenious device. The idea, of course, is to let your attacker have the bag. And not only has he those arms to contend with, but a trapped hand, too. With anything up to £20,000 in fivers in the case, the thief has a big decision to make. He can't climb into a getaway car with that 12-foot span of rigid telescopic arms, so unless he surrenders on the spot, he's got to try and bluff his way out by walking home like this. Then, even if he made it, how's he going to get in? It's hardly fair after all the trouble he's been to. You're spending a night in police custody with cops on the box. For 40 years, detectives have stalked our TV screens. Criminal Records presents a musical journey through four decades of screen gumshoes. Yeah. 